Pig slanting is an alternate picking mechanic that enables you to more efficiently switch between strings when playing fast picking lines. Without pig slanting, it's just not really possible to transition between strings on certain types of licks, which results in the pick getting stuck in between strings. Pig slanting comes in two varieties, downward pick slanting and upward pick slanting. As the name suggests, downward pick slanting involves angling the pick downwards, which enables the pick to escape the plane of the strings whenever you play an upstroke. Conversely, upward pick slanting involves angling the pick upwards, which enables the pick to escape the plane of the strings whenever you play a downstroke. By the way, the direction of the slant is determined by the top of the pick, not the bottom. Some types of licks lend themselves to downward slanting, and other types of licks lend themselves to upward slanting. Understanding how to work this out will be one of those key moments in your guitar education journey. And thankfully, how we work this out is super easy, as the type of slant you perform is only dependent on the last pick stroke on a string. This is because, like discussed earlier, the whole idea of pick slanting is to allow the pick to escape the plane of the strings and not get stuck in between them. So this makes sense that it's only the last pick stroke of a string that counts, right? So, if your picking sequence on a string ends on a downstroke, you need to ensure you're using an upward slant so that the pick can escape downwards and not get stuck on the string below it. And conversely, if your picking sequence on a string ends on an upstroke, you need to ensure you're using a downward slant so that the pick can escape upwards and not get stuck on the string below it. Let's look at some examples to put all of this into context. <laughs> Alright, so our first lick is this very simple two note per string D minor pentatonic run. So obviously with two note per string runs that start on a downstroke, uh, every second note obviously is an upstroke, uh, which means we're going to be using downward pick slanting, okay? This is like a perfect candidate for downward slanting. So what we do, we get ourselves in position, ready to do our minor pentatonic run, but instead of having our pick in like a neutral position, we're going to tilt it down here like this. So you see the pick is now slanted downwards away from us, okay? See, this is like neutral position and this is downward slanting, okay? Neutral, down, neutral, down. So nice and slowly to start with, keep a good eye on my picking hand, okay? So as you probably noticed, when you pick down, when you have a slant, you pick the string and then the slant gives you the opportunity to escape up here at this trajectory. So instead, if you are at like a neutral angle, you pick and then when you come to go back, look, you get stuck on the string you were just at. You can't, you can't get out. This is what leads to sort of like, you know, this unwanted noise and whatnot. But when you have a slant, you pick down, now look, you can get out super easy and go to the next note. So that means when you get to higher speeds, because you can escape the strings, you know, so easily and efficiently, it, you know, you have like way less resistance. So you can just like breeze through all of these, like what would otherwise be pretty hard string changes. And next up, we have our classic Paul Gilbert style lick, descending down a minor scale in sixes. Again, if you try this sort of lick in a more neutral picking position, then look. When you go to change string, look, you bash into the B string. You can't get over it, which means, you know, to get past it, you've got to sort of like 
You've got to pull the pick like through the string and it creates unwanted noise and this is what makes your fast picking really messy. So like last time, we switched from a neutral picking position to a downward slant. Okay, so that means after we finish our first group of six, there you go, look, we're already up in this trajectory. We've escaped the string and we're ready to switch to the B string right away. For our first upward pick slanting lick, we have a perfect candidate for this type of picking strategy, which is where you have a mix of odd note groupings going to even note groupings between strings. In this case, the pattern goes like this. So in this case, you've got a group of three on the D string, going to a group of two on the G string, and then back to another group of three on the D string. If you try and do this with downward pick slanting, look what happens. Uh-oh, you get stuck on the G string. So the way around this is to instead use upward pick slanting. So instead of having a downward slant, we go back to neutral position and we go the other way. So we're going up towards us, okay? We're slanting up. And what that does, it allows the pick to escape this way, away from us. Which means, look, when we try this, We've already escaped the D string and we can come back on the upstroke on the G string. Here we go. I'm really trying to exaggerate that slanting movement so you can see exactly what's going on picking wise. And for our second upward pick slanting lick, again, we're gonna do the classic Paul Gilbert style lick. Exactly the same as last time, but instead of starting on a group of six, we're starting on a group of three, okay? Which again, means because we're mixing up this groupings of uh, even and odd numbers, means that we have to use a upward slanting approach instead, okay? So just like last time, we return to our neutral position, and then instead of tilting the pick down, we're tilting it up towards us, okay? So we have this nice slant going upwards now, and then when we do the first three notes, well look, we've already escaped the E string all the way up here, which means we're free to come down onto the uh, B string with the upstroke. For the purposes of demonstration, you may have noticed that I'm really going out of my way to exaggerate the angles of the slant, just so it's perfectly clear what's going on. When you first start out practicing this, I'd advise you to do the same until you really feel you understand the fundamentals of pick slanting. Then, as you get more and more confident and start to pick up speed, you'll naturally start to minimize the angle of the slant until it's barely even noticeable. When you watch pro alternate pickers play, you usually can't even tell they're using pick slanting because their movements are so damn subtle. Now, downward slanting and upward slanting aren't too difficult to get the hang of on their own. You'll find that these sort of movements are incredibly intuitive and make life loads easier for a lot of your go-to alternate picking licks. But the real difficulty comes when you have to combine both slants consecutively across strings. This ultimate challenge is called two-way pick slanting and is what separates the god pickers from the mere mortals. Let's take a look at a lick that requires this. All right, and here we have our final boss, the two-way pick slant lick. So, uh, a prime candidate for this is three note per string scale runs, okay? So what you'll notice about this sort of lick, if you try to apply just one slant to it, it doesn't work. It falls apart after the first string. 
For example, if we try to do a downward slant on the whole thing, we start down here. Ah, shit, look, we're already stuck on the D string, so we can't do that. We'll try an upward slant. Okay, works to go to the D string. But uh-oh, we can't get to the G string because we're stuck here now. You see the problem? So this means that after crossing every string, we have to switch to the opposite slant, okay? So we start with an upward slant and then go to a downward slant, then upwards, downwards, and then finish on an upwards again. So slowly, it looks something like this, starting with an upward slant, downwards, upwards, downwards, upwards. Up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up. Now this takes a hell of a lot of coordination at first, so make sure you practice it on a uh, left-hand pattern that you're extremely comfortable with and you don't have to put any thought into so you can put all of your focus into your picking hand, okay? Now there is actually an alternative way to do this. The other way you can do this is to change your slant at the last possible moment so you maintain it going into the next string. But on the last note of the next string, you switch slant here. Okay, so that would look something like this. Up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up. At first, that version is definitely harder to coordinate, but I would definitely recommend playing around with both versions and seeing what suits you the best, what comes more naturally. To get tabs, backing tracks, and a lesson for this video, as well as a sick selection of super fun guitar workouts, courses, ebooks, and weekly mentoring from me, then click the link in the description below to visit Bradley Hall's Guitar School and sign up today for free. Cheers, guys, and happy shredding.